Hello viewers, I'm back. I don't know how often I'm going to be posting videos, but obviously a, a bit more often than I have recently. It's been a bit of a hectic year, but let's get cracking. I'm going to start off. I don't even think I've actually done one of these. Uh, I'm not meaning personally, but on camera. This is the GHD SS 4.0. As normal, I don't know what's wrong with this. I've just taken it out of the packet. This is the first time I've actually unraveled the cable. Let's just have a quick visual feel. See what the cable is like. Hopefully I'm on camera, probably not. I say this, it must be about a year now since I've done these. I've done a video. Right, cable looks okay. Doesn't mean it is. Alright, next, as in most of my previous videos, let's try and get the hinge covers off. There's one. Can't get under that, so. Let me try and yep, use a, a spudger or where, where, I don't even know what they call them to be honest. But you can, you can buy them on eBay. There's nothing more than a very flexible, strong piece of metal, primarily for opening things like iPhones and that. Right, next, let's. the hinge pin out let's part that hinge spring out and what I will do as I've said in previous videos, I, I like to take off the cover to give me a bit more lead manipulation here. On the SS5, they're, they're a wide plate. There's actually three screws on each cover compared to two on the standard models. All right, there's one cover off. Do the other cover. Second cover off. All right, let's get my meter. I do have it uh, displaying on the video in the top left. At the moment, it's reading overload volts because it's uh, not measuring any resistance. Right, the first thing I want to do thermal fuse, two brown wires on the outside. It's actually marked here and here as fuse, so let's test that. Okay. It's looking like 0.3 of an ohm, so the thermal fuse is good. Let's test the heaters. Right, we've got 70 ohms. Now I know that is not good because there is two 70 ohms. Each heater is about 70 ohms, but they're in parallel, so the reading I should get on this model is about 35 ohms. So I know that one of these heaters is broken or the wires broken and I would actually presume it's this side that's broken the reason why this is the temperature sensors on this side so if this one breaks what happens is this one overheats and the thermal fuse blows seeing that the thermal fuse hasn't blown the only real way that that can happen is if this heat is 
broken so it doesn't get hot enough to blow the thermal fuse and this here is the one that's good the other way we can test it let's put our meter on was that 70.2 as you heat up if I actually put my hand on this one as you see there's no change in ohmage because this is the broken one if I put my hand on this one and start to heat up the plate well it's probably going to take quite a while actually because it's got a thick plate yeah, and you can just see it's starting to go up. And that's just where I'm heating the heating the plate. If I actually just grabbed hold of it and did that, it'll probably go up a bit faster. As you see, it is only fractions of an ohm, but it does change. So I'm going to immediately disconnect this side and then we can confirm this so that little trick's just narrowed down where i need to look i'm not saying i, I could be wrong but experience says i only need to look in this one Get these screws out, you don't want to lose them. It's very easy to. The rubber can go back in. I have a habit of forgetting those. Right, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. There's our fault, ladies and gentlemen. Right, we need to dismantle this. Beauty about the SS is I've actually got plenty of room. And the easiest way of doing this is to get a knife. Just looking for me around because it was a bit dirty. And right, I want to get right by that heater. And I'm going to push. Right, I need to try and get this rubber off. Come on. Right, back under. Let's just push that heater out. There you go, you can see where it's broken off. Now this heat is out, there should be no tension in the rest of this. Sometimes there is. And today there is. It should normally fall out. Pull the thermal fuse out. Just the clip. Right, normally I've got a hole here where I can actually push it down a bit. Just to release her. There, she's released. So it should just all just beautifully slide out. Come on. Oh, look, and you can see a nice little bang mark where the uh, that wire went. Right, clean this off and put some more thermal compound on, ready for the new heater. Right. Now let me just grab one from this store. Where did I put them? Aha, they're here. Where are they? Yes, they are. Well, this is actually an original GHD heater. I managed to acquire. Um, these from a few
few that are broken down and obviously nice original one you can't beat the quality of that you can buy third party ones but the wire plate ones uh, do run in at about nine pound a heater well the standard ones are about three pound a heater so they're three times the price so if i ever get the opportunity i will will go for some original heaters as you see this used to be a heater on the uh, the mister side it doesn't matter if the mist is removed and I'm just bedding that down in the thermal paste. Now slide the retainer clip and put the thermal fuse back in. Right there, there. Where was where did that rubber go? Let's put the rubber back on. Come on. Right, so that's all nicely constructed. Just need the uh, plate holder. These can tend to be brittle. Just making sure I had it the right way around. Small notch towards the leads. In. In. Haven't cracked it. It's solid. It's there. All right, what I will do is just do a check. That will fuse again just in case I broke it. It's good. My new heater. 78. The other heater that's in there, 70. There's a bit of discrepancy. A lot of it is because I've been handling this one, they're nominal 70 ohms. Because I have been handling it, this one will be warm. And as I showed you before, the resistance will have changed. Now right, let's construct this. One, that's the two heater connections. Pushing the wires down to avoid the tab here. Hopefully you can see that, because I am not anywhere near the screen that shows you what I'm recording. Now the uh, two thermal fuse. And we are done there. Right, I fixed the first fault I found. Now we need to see if there's any more. Believe it or not, you do quite often get multiples. So we'll go over this again. So we now have good thermal fuse, 0.2.3 of an ohm. These are 270 ohm heaters in parallel. So we're about 35 ohms ish. 37 ohms. See the difference there, ladies and gentlemen, compared to the 74. 70 we had before all right let's check this has only got an r8 there's no r11 so i will check this which should be 100 ohms then 100.1 how about that that is good Okay. I would normally take the uh, switch apart, but this is a very stiff. There's two types. There's two so one which has got two springs and one which has got a single spring. This is a single spring action. They're very much harder to switch on. Uh, problem is when you take them apart, you cannot for love nor money put them back together. Tell a light you can, but it'll probably take me 15 minutes to get back together. 
and uh, the, the action of it, they don't actually go the wrong as much as the other ones. Believe it or not, there seems to be more tension. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's whip the cover off the ends. I need to check the uh, swivel joint. Okay. It's not too bad. It's not really too dirty. It's a little bit. I may put a bit of contact grease on there. It feels a bit dry. And for this, I'm going to be using some SGB contact treatment. Christ, that's a tongue twist, isn't it? So I'm going to SGB contact treatment grease. And we just need a little bit. A little bit. Must admit, I do like the smell. It actually reminds me of. Oh, that's a lot better. It reminds me of. Uh, in the 80s, there used to be like some. Quite a few shops that. Uh, used to do model railways, and they, you know, it used to be a big thing. Or it was where I came from. And it, this was the type of grease that they used to lubricate, lubricate the contacts, I presume. But it's that smell, uh, you know, it's got its own distinct smell. It's a bit like WH Smith's for us in the UK. Uh, they all have that, that smell, don't they? It's very much like that. So, right. What I'm going to do. Let's see how we go. Let's bring my antiquated meter. I haven't quite got that on the screen yet. The thermocouple which I'm putting dead centre of the plate. Right, making sure the switch is on here. So I'm hoping when we apply power this should shoot into life. Right. Contact. Hey, did something. Oh, we're heating up. Oh, we're looking for, a, you know, around, I like about 188 degrees C. Uh, you know, it's acceptable probably up to 191. I don't like going much further than that. And I don't like going much lower than 183. Uh, that's just my preference. I think uh, some people say it's 185 degrees C plus or minus 10, but uh, it's however you want to work. Okay, we're in the right ballpark. It's going high at the moment, which they quite often do, and then they'll drop back down. So we need to get the normal running temperature. Okay, it's pretty static and <clears throat> it is flicking one nine two. One nine three. It is a wandering. It is actually perfectly acceptable, as I said. But I do like to run up had cooler than that so what I might do is I might actually adjust this one well most people will tell you the amount fours don't have adjustment but there is some little ways you can do it now, that's 192 all right let's unplug safety first turn you off Okay, let's clear my bench. <clears throat> I 
and this is blooming hot let me just toggle my microscope on see if i can find it let's have a look microscope microscope is that one why did not you color oh see if i can find it now i can that's better Okay, for some reason, yeah. the software uh, was uh, on an STC format and not the power format. Right. That's tweaky, tweaky, tweaky. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, that's the thing I'm going to do. If you, for those that have uh, been watching along, you probably noticed I have not stopped waffling, I have not stopped the video. Which also means that I've only just turned these off, so they are blooming hot. So I'm putting that over. Because I am right-handed, sometimes cack-handed, but generally right-handed. That bleep was, I'm just switching my soldering iron on. Let's get a bit of temperature. Right, to adjust the temperature. What we're going to do is we're going to change out this component here. Now what you've got is you've got like the ground here, you've got this component, then you've got the thermistor, then the thermistor then comes back to the supply. So this is the thermistor and this is the potential divider. So actually just tweaking this one does actually change the temperature. And what I found, this is a 4.3.2. So, oh, excuse me. So it's a 4.3. This is, this one here is a 4.3, is it 4.3K? I think it is, yeah. And I'm going to change it for a 4.7k. Now, changing to a 4.7k will drop the te drop the temperature by about five degrees. So we got about 193. I would expect then about 180. Smack on where I want to be. Now I haven't bought billions of these of different values. I've done an increment. Uh, done the uh, 4.7 or 4k7 which will drop it by 5 degrees and the 5k2 will drop it by 10 degrees well actually it's about 9 degrees so I know this will pull it out of that hot region into that nice ballpark region that I like right my iron should be hot so are the plates I'm working on so We'll just heat up either side of this TLD resistor and remove it. Find the tweezers. So that the stick on the board, right? That's out. Now let's get. He's there. He is upside down. So this one should be it was a four four points. So this should be four seven. Uh, in orbit, in orbit, ladies and gentlemen. That is somewhere on the other side of the workshop. Probably the weld. Alright, we've got another one. Which is off the microscope, but it is just here. There it is. Or seven 
zero one. So that's four seven zero plus one zero. So four seven zero zero is the value in ohms. So four point seven K, but the other one was I can't remember where it was now. Four three, wasn't it? So it was four three two, so that's four three and two zeros. Right. Let's see if we can just get this just to not tombstone, but just get a bit of surface tension with the solder. Come on. Oops. We'll get there in a minute. Okay, there she is. She's in. That's good enough. Don't look pretty. Doesn't have to look pretty. Has to be practical. Right, put those components away. And then we're going to do the exactly the same. Right. Meter. Let me turn off the mic. Because it's a big square now in this room. The mic has gone off. Oh, I'm not Bob. Alright. On. Thermocouple. Dead centre. Those plates were still 100 degrees. Hence why I used my T towel. Let's plug it in now. And hopefully this will be more around the 188 degrees Okay, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just flicking around. 186. 185. I think that's a very... That's more in my ballpark that I like. Let's unplug it. We could have got away with the 193. Uh, but that will rapidly shorten the life of... The thermal fuse because believe it or not with use they do eventually fail even if you don't go over temperature and the higher you are the quicker they'll go right now it's a, a case of reconstructing PO's who is an observant? I've missed a rubber. Like I said, that's why I put that rubber back in there before, because I normally put it all back together. Ah, oh, damn! I've got these all these spares. No, no, it's not that bad. I normally have got the cover on at least one screen before I notice, and there's a rubber missing. So. Covers on, so nice flat, switch is operational. Top cover on. like so hinge a spring I like to think what it was called then in put it together 
Okay, Kevin. Doesn't want to line up. Let's line it up. There he is, lined up. Let's do that up. Hinge covers on. And there we go. One completed repair. Okay, many thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, I am going to do more content and try and touch on other things. If anyone has any ideas or thoughts of what to do, just put a comment and uh, I mean, uh, I'll consider them if it's uh, not too difficult on that. So, uh, catch you next time.